Hi. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this actually is a, a first. It's our first meeting where folks can attend. Uh, and so for those of you who showed up, good, good to see you. And for those of you on the phone, welcome um, to our July 11th meeting. And as always, uh, we want to hear from you. So we will. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> Universal <laughs> Studio <laughs> background. Saturday on vacation. That's Another actually question. where he is. <laughs> you are something, Tony. <laughs> what we're all laughing about, folks, is uh, Tony Elder, who's at uh, Universal Studios, and he's, he's looking at the, other, the hut at the moment. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, if we have hands raised and people would like to make comments, uh, please, please chime in. We'd love to hear. Uh, Jay, our first hand raised hand is Phil Mancusi Delgaro. Phil, you should be unmuted. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let me just start by saying I, the, the sound is a lot better than it was the last couple of times. I can actually hear folks talking, which is good. Um, so I'm not sure what you did to improve it, but thank you. I had just two questions. I, you know, I had asked for a copy of the um, the traffic calming report ahead of time, so I could actually look at it, have and understand it, and maybe ask questions associated with it. So I will wait and see when when that report is done. Um, I do have two questions, in particular one is, will you be able to tell us what the actual top speeds that we are seeing out there on the island, particularly at the at the intersection of Buffalo Head and Glen Abbey, um, because the way the data is presented, you don't get a, you, you can't figure out exactly what those speeds are. And I know in the past they've been pretty high. Um, the other question is, will the board consider redoing the analysis for that intersection for pedestrians crossing? As you know, I pointed out that they stand tech had done an analysis for cars merging onto the road. Um, Pedestrian crossing analysis is, is different. Um, I provided several examples of, of equations that can be used to do that. Um, I'm just curious if the board will consider letting Stantec redo it or somebody else redo it to actually look at the time it takes for pedestrians to clear the intersection and therefore what their line of sight would need to be. I personally know what it is, but it would be, be good if the board would take that on. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right, Jerry, next question is from Paul Hennessy. Paul, you should be unmuted. Great, thanks guys. <clears throat> uh, thanks for taking my question. So I understand that the, that the comments at the front end of the meeting have to do with items on the agenda. So I will restrict myself uh, and at this time to to one question and it, it has to do with the human resource committee charter um, in that charter uh, importantly it highlights the new con relatively new conflict of interest policy and my question for the for whomever for the board is have all board members uh, complied with that policy, number one, and number two, have any conflicts of interest been identified by any member of the board? Well, I can, I can answer that, Brad, you can yeah. as well. Paul, and Eric, and all board members have signed the, the, um, the, the, the form. In fact, we just re-signed it again uh, because of an issue, but, uh, but the other issue is uh, I don't I can't speak for all board members whether they've disclosed any conflicts. I mean I know I disclosed one, which was that I reside in reserve, get reserve is an issue that comes before the board. So I don't know if I, that is hey, a potential. Hey, Brad, sorry, could you could you move a little closer to the mic? Because I, I feel sure. like there's I, I don't know I don't know where the mic is. It's one of the problems. <laughs> okay, my, uh, Phillips. Uh, I'll, all right, I'll speak to where speak to where the mic is. Does that help? Okay, the the, the sound. I agree with Philip. The, the sound quality has improved, but uh, we I was having a difficult time hearing your response. Sorry. I right. basically everybody signed the form, the conflict of interest form, the disclosure, 
Uh, I can't comment on what others have dis you know, disclosed. I know I disclosed as the conflict I had was a potential conflict was that I uh, reside in the preserve. Preserve is currently an issue before the court. Major. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Paul, the uh, the intent was that, that at the end, uh, any conflicts would be disclosed. I mean, that the, that was the purpose of the conflict of interest uh, policy. Okay, that this is not this is the document that you sign that you're saying you do or you do not, but it's all going to be disclosed. These are not these are not private and confidential documents. Okay, uh, so they will be disclosed. Any conflicts will be disclosed to our membership. By anyone, not only the board, by the way, because the requirement is for all committee members, all task force members to sign this conflict of interest uh, form as well. So, so uh, Alex, thank you. That, that was my understanding too. I guess my question is, um, I certainly haven't seen any disclosure. And so I'm, does that mean that there were no conflicts? And Brad just identified one that I'm hearing for the first time. Now, we, we've had a hiccups uh, with reference to compiling all of the conflict of interest forms okay, before we make any statement. And we're in that process now. But I can assure you that I've been, I, Shannon knows that I've been pursuing this because, you know, I obviously spearheaded this conflict of interest policy. So I can assure you that we will be making a disclosure if there's any, any to be done and that we're pursuing that everybody signs the conflict of interest policy. So just give us a little bit of time. We're on it. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you. That that uh, that answers my question. Thanks. That's and that's that's all I all I need on this. Thank you. Well, by the way, if you did have any other questions you wanted to ask, feel free. Okay, we have one more. We have Phil Mancusi Ogaro again, Joey. Um, Phil, you should be on mute. Okay, um, Phil. Another question. Yeah. No, it's just following up. I asked two questions, one about the maximum speed that they've seen out there, particularly at the Buffalhead um, intersection, but then also whether the board would entertain seeking to have um, Santec or some other consultant do a pedestrian crossing analysis. I was told that the board was not gonna spend any more money on that, um, but I think that's an important, important um, analysis that needs to be done to fully understand the effects at that intersection. So is there any response to that? It will be considered. And what about the speeds? Well, let's wait until after you've heard the reports and then see what uh, our priorities are. Move forward from there and take under advisement. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Well, we have Jerry. Paul, did you have another question? No, no, those are mutes. We're gonna, that's all the questions we have. Well, there we go. Okay. Um, so we will, uh, having had that, thank you all for your comments. Again, we uh, have all of our email addresses, and uh, I think everyone has uh, become very responsive to the questions that we get uh, either. Uh, individually or as a board, but we want to do better. And so if you have any thoughts or ideas about how we can continue to be, <clears throat> to be transparent, uh, we welcome those. Okay, so uh, there being no other uh, questions before the board, let me call this meeting uh, to order. Um, and just have a couple of things I'd, I'd like to say. This is an interesting time on Kiowa. Uh, in all the time I've been here, I don't think that I've ever seen so much change at foot. Um, we are uh, entering a phase of a great deal of construction. The island is more popular than it ever has been. So there are houses being built. There are people coming here and we notice and feel the strains of all of that and are doing our very best uh, to attend to those, to respond to your comments, uh, this is a town in uh, an area that's governed by a number of bodies and interacting with those bodies is a very important uh, part of what we as a board do. Uh, we want to have good relationships with our partners, resort partners, uh, town, 
And we want to make sure that we have an open and clear channel of communication. Um, and there are challenges with that. I will, I will speak very plainly about it. It's not always clear what, uh, what each of us are up to, and we need to be much more transparent with each other. And to that end, uh, the board uh, has agreed that we will uh, reach out in, in a more collaborative way to work with partners, to work with the town, to understand things, um, and to be, you know, to be of better service to you. After all, that's why we're here. Um, and this is no easy job, believe me. Um, I think if I had any idea how much time um, that was going to be involved with this, I would have <laughs> wondered whether or not I should do it. And I think a lot of folks here, uh, and you're going to hear later about one guy who signed up for a job and realized he has to pay some attention to his family. He's going to be leaving us. But um, we, we are here. We are dedicated to you. We do want to respond and hear from you. And uh, we hope that you'll bear with us because these challenges are not easy to face and they're not going to go away. We're not suddenly going to have a super highway out to Kiowa. Uh, we are not suddenly going to solve all of the traffic issues, but we are hard at work doing it. We have some very smart, capable board members uh, who I know many of you interact with and I encourage you to do so. I'm not the kind of uh, chairperson who thinks I'm, you know, the only one who can have an opinion or, or speak with you. This board operates as a team, and that's very important. And it's very important that you understand we respect each other, and we have certain skill sets that we depend upon to draw upon to come up with the best solutions. That's all I have to say at this particular time. Um, and so uh, let's move on to the administrative um, Part, and I think I may need a motion to approve the minutes. June 6th. Of June 6th. Yeah, I so move. Second. Oh, any, any opposed? So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the minutes of June 6th are approved. Uh, the next item is uh, ratification of our e vote. Uh, which is the new backup server. Shannon, did you want to make yeah, any so I can about take that? piece for you? Um, the Kika Board of Directors has taken two electronic board votes between their meeting of June the 6th and today, so that their vote is recorded as part of the minutes today. They're going to ratify their vote. Both votes were related to upgrades in our IT systems. The first vote was taken on June the 7th for a new Barracuda backup server provide better and more frequent backups of Kika corporate records. Cost of the equipment and one year of service was $15,960. The equipment is now installed and operational. For today's minutes, would each of the board members indicate their vote on the purchase of this item? All those that were in favor? Aye. And um, Ellen, if you would note that David DiStefano also voted in favor. Um, the second vote was taken on July the 6th for an upgraded firewall to Sandcastle facility. Based upon our network security consultant, we were advised to put our Wi-Fi systems, both business and guests, through our firewalls at all locations. The Sandcastle's existing firewall was undersized to do this, and we experienced dropping of Wi-Fi signals. We increased to a firewall which could handle 1,000 devices at any given time. The total cost was $6,451. The equipment is now installed and operational. For today's minutes, would each board member indicate their vote on the purchase of this item? All those who were in favor? Aye. Aye. And would you indicate that David was also in favor electronically? All right. Those are your people. Can I just, can I just point out that Dave is not here because yeah. on special assignment, basically? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I agree. Yeah, we should. Uh, he's out with the Charleston County on the uh, and uh, Andel looking at what's going on there. So he's uh, representing the board there. So it's an important task. That means he can't be two places at one time. That's right. Hey, hey Shannon. Yes, ma'am. Um, you have the dehumidifier on here as well. Unless I'm looking at a wrong agenda. You've got an old agenda. Okay, never mind. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Committee reports. Uh, first, though, let's hear uh, Shannon. Sure. 
So we just came through the July 4th holiday weekend, which is one of our busiest on the island. I'm sure all of you saw that. I believe that Mark is going to cover um, from a security perspective and give you a few highlights on that in his report. But at the Sandcastle, we were also very busy and our staff did a great job through the holiday weekend. For July the 4th, we welcomed 3,200 people to the Sandcastle up from 2,600 in 2021. For July 4th itself, we welcomed 1,116 people up from 808 in 2021. Our sandcastle grill and sandbar operated. I just had okay. to compare because obviously 21 we still got COVID issues. So we were How fully does it compared open. to 2019 when we didn't have COVID. We're still up. Okay. We're still up. Same with revenues related to curtailment. We're also up over 2019. Um, so Castle Grill is operated by crew catering. Also very busy that weekend with days over 10,000 each day, which is a high number for us. For Monday, July 4th, their gross was 17,839. We're happy that so many of our members and their families were able to enjoy the sandcastle for the holiday. In terms of infrastructure projects, following delays due to our milling laydown sites and weather, we had finally gotten to the end of phase two of Banks Construction Paving Project. Our engineers were driving the project earlier this morning to review it. We have one final phase to go, which is for roads in the front or western section of Vanderhorst Plantation. Our engineers are working with Banks Construction on schedules now, and we will put out information to our members as soon as the schedules are confirmed. We continue to work on smaller metal drainage pipes. New pipe is currently working on an approximate $400,000 drainage project in the Seamarsh neighborhood. They've cleaned out and video drainage pipes in this area. New cured in place liners have been ordered for a number of these pipes in order to make the necessary repairs. And this repair work is scheduled to begin this week. Also on our repair schedule this year is the Summer Islands Bridge redecking. This project is currently delayed due to supply chain as we wait on these large timbers. Um, you may have recently seen a video and an article we put out related to the new electronic gate we have installed at the Beachwalker Drive outfall. This gate permits us to, or this electronic gate permits us to operate the gate in conjunction with tide cycles, even if our personnel is not on island or we cannot access the island due to storms. This was an identified project as part, as part of the town sea level rise report. And we're pleased to have this project completed after several years of planning. The next drainage basin we are planning for is our largest drainage basin, which is Canvas Back Pond. Shen, the yes, reference to that, it's not that it operates automatically. Somebody like, can operate it. We can operate it electronically. Yeah, that's from the distance you're saying. Yes, sir. Digitally. Yes, sir. It's not that it does it. It doesn't do it automatically. We have, we have to. Well, that's the next day. I yes. believe that we need to get to the next day. Yeah. We need a bot. Yeah, that's what we mean. And it does have a generator associated with it. So even if power goes down to the island, we can still operate it. Um, currently, Kika is working with Stanpak Consulting on the final planning and bidding of our last flood management projects, which are scheduled to get underway this fall. Our land management team has begun their line of site work on the main parkways. Their first location was the intersection of Kiwa and Parkway and Governors. The final step of installing turf will occur later this week, and they have now moved to line of sight work at Governor's Drive and Surf Song Road. And for our Zoom participants, uh, the Board of Directors is aware, obviously, that their video and sound isn't great in this room. It's okay. It's not great. Um, so we have been meeting with AV companies to improve both sound and video into Bobcat Hall. We do have um, demo sound equipment coming in later this week to see if we can continue to improve sound in this room. And that is a project that staff is currently working on. So hopefully by the September meeting, you'll have a much better experience um, for board meetings in this room. Yes, sir. Question on the Summer Islands. Does that also include the small bridge on Fountain Point? It does not. It's just Summer Islands. That's a, that bridge seems to be pretty bad in shape. I can ask the engineers about it. I can't remember the last time it was working. 
And it's the smaller of the two? Small, there, there's a small there's one two. on the Falcon Point, then you go out to the little circle there and go to the right. Summer Island. Summer. Yeah. We have insurance that's covering the accident that happens as a result of bridge failure. Bridge failure in what way? Um, failure to what? To access? No. Failure of the bridge itself, liability. So if someone gets injured. Somebody gets injured, yes. Not the right. damage to the bridge itself. No. Liability. Right. Yeah. Liability, yes. 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 Same for our roads, our trails. Yeah. Our general yeah. liability yeah. costs. Um, that's the end of the report, sir. That's okay. That, that's an asset that is difficult to ensure. I mean, not ensure. But. All right. Uh, thank you, Shannon. Sure. Any, any other questions from Shannon? Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, Alex, our treasurer, give a report. Okay. Uh, something that I've been reporting regularly with reference to, uh, I keep on saying that our CTR money uh, would be dropping. Uh, because everything tells you that real estate sales are are down or coming down. Uh, I'm sorry to say that I was wrong uh, <laughs> because in the month of June, we had 42 closings in Kiwa, 42 closings. So as of June 30th, we have surpassed the budget of $2 million of CTR money for all of 2022. So we're at $2,070,000. 2,070,000. Our budget was 2 million. So again, I'll state what I've said in the past. You know, we believe that obviously uh, real estate sales are dropping, are going down. We we don't have to work. We, we committed, you know, we've obviously exceeded our budget. We don't have any, this is good news for us. There's no doubt. But, uh, we just like to be, you know, budgeting better. We just, we're not, we weren't able to do it uh, this time. Just, uh, but it's good news anyway. But 42 closings in June in Q1. Excuse me, Alex. July is trending down, but yeah, that's right. I mean, we do see we do see indications. You're right. Thank you, Dale. We do see indications, uh, but we're over we're over the budgeted number anyway. This is all goes into our our our, uh, our reserve account, so it's all good news. Okay. Uh, secondly, on the web page, uh, you'll be able to find our 990 tax form. That's a an annual form that, uh, as a nonprofit, uh, we need to file. Uh, it's on the web page for you for all of our members to review. Uh, there is a uh, this year we had to file an additional tax form with reference to the Casique security contract uh, because that was a uh, earnings that are outside of the realm of our activity. And for a nonprofit, we had to re remain within our realm that was outside of our realm. In any event, there was no tax consequence, just the opposite. There was a loss. For the Casique security business, and uh, by the way, too, that contract uh, has been agreed that as of July thirty first uh, has been uh, will not continue as of July third as of August first. July thirty first will be the final date of that contract uh, an agreement uh, with both parties. So uh, nothing to worry about after August first. But we did file we did file the tax uh, requirement that we had. Okay. And there was no now when 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 because we had a tax loss, that means that business generated a loss. It was not a profitable business in, in any event. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, the other thing I have for you is uh, that I've always mentioned with reference to the Linkwin accounts. Remember back in April, I mentioned of the surprise that we had that we had over two million dollars of the Linkwin payments of assessment, and uh, and Dale and his people. Well, the board first said, you know, we need to focus on this and we made some changes to the uh, control manual uh, to be sure that we pursued this uh, vigorously. And uh, Dale got on it immediately. And I'm pleased to to uh, to tell you that uh, as of July 11th, just what's today? Today. Hey. That's today. As of today. As of today. Thank you. As of today, uh, we're down to $25,725. Uh, we have filed liens. Uh, we had six liens from the previous years. That's down to two liens. People have prepaid, obviously, when you contact them, when you tell them you, know, you need to pay, whatever, they do pay. And we have seven liens that have been filed in 2022. So right now we have seven 
where we have nine meets all together in the over 4,400 properties uh, that Kika has in, in his uh, in his portfolio. Uh, we're down to you know just seven leads so with twenty five thousand. So applause to Dale really for the job of pursuing this. You know, making this a priority uh, of not allowing people not to pay their assessment. You know, as they should. Okay, so a lot of communications with people, a lot of warnings, and those that don't apply, then they get a lien on their property. But very few at the end of the day, very few. So that's 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 good news. And lastly is. Uh, Next week, uh, we'll be seeing uh, the second quarterly report. Uh, the 30th of June, we closed the quarter. So uh, uh, Dale has uh, committed that uh, during next week, um, the week of uh, the 18th, the week of the 18th, uh, we'll be publishing the uh, second quarterly uh, financial statement report. So that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Unless there are any questions. Yeah, any questions for, for Alex? All right, that takes care of uh, our current business. Uh, now let's move into new business. And Alex, again, modification to our investment policy in interesting times. Yeah. Um, on June 1st, the Finance Committee uh, met with uh, our investment manager, Moneda, and had a full presentation of uh, what's happened in the last 12 months. You know, this is an annual presentation that they make. They report to us quarterly, but they make an annual presentation, uh, and they did so. And uh, there's two two items that uh, were recommended by the finance committee to the board to make changes to the investment policy. Number one, uh, which is very important, something that I've mentioned on several on many occasions, of uh, the amount of cash uh, that we have in our bank accounts, and not only are they not generating. Uh, any uh, investment return, uh, but number two, you know, they surpassed the two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar insurance, the federal uh, insurance uh, deposit. If 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 I F D I C, thank you. Uh, and which obviously, you know, you know, in good banks, I don't I don't have a concern about that, but it still violates, you know, that that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we so again. Dale took this as a as a, uh, a priority, and uh, we now have as part of you know an investment portfolio is shorter term. They're not long term uh, funds uh, because they they come from mostly the majority of them from our operating account. Uh, we now have established a relationship with the investment people, with the investment manager, to also manage our short term. Okay, and all of these are on, on treasury bills basically. Uh, but they do generate, they do generate interest. They do generate return. It's it's a substantial amount of money. Okay, today we're talking over fourteen million dollars that we have in short term funds. Okay, that in the past we've had them sitting down mostly in banking account, checking accounts, or money market funds that don't generate the return that we really are looking for. So. Uh, Dale's done a great job of, you know, tackling this, and uh, we looked at our cash flow needs, and then we've scheduled, we've had, we've got a schedule on, on these treasury bills in the next two years, I mean, basically they go out to two years, but at the end of the day, we need somebody to help us manage, you know, that $14 million portfolio at the end of the day, so we want to, uh, in the investment policy, to include uh, wording that also uh, allows the, the investment manager to handle these funds as well too. Okay. Uh, the second item that was recommended by the finance committee is uh, with reference to some of the ranges. And uh, we want to be a little bit more broad with reference to uh, how our investments are uh, invested, how our funds are invested. Right now, uh, we have that equities uh, have a guideline of being at 35%. And the finance committee recommended that they should be arranged between 30 to 40 percent. So broaden it a little bit, but give the investment manager flexibility at the same time as well. If you need to be a little bit lower at whatever the timing or the situation is. So uh, we recommend that uh, the guideline be changed from 35 percent to an acceptable range of 30 to 40 percent. And then with reference to cash, which is that 14 million dollar portfolio that I mentioned to you. Uh, to a guideline of it's in a range of 
zero to five percent. Basically, that that should be our uh, the guide on this. So, uh, so the two wording changes is one also for the investment manager to, to uh, handle short term short term cash, and then increase our equity uh, guideline from thirty uh, from thirty five percent a flat thirty percent thirty five percent to thirty to uh, thirty to forty percent. So that's I want to make a motion uh, to approve the changes to our investment policy as per the recommendation of the finance group. Just a um, couple of questions. Second. And yeah, discussion. Sure. Um, so just a couple of questions. I think the current guideline for equity is 30%, right? It is. Okay. So the current guideline yeah, so is it's 30, 70. And so they're they're broadening the range. Yeah. Right. No, I get that. It's current, the current guideline is 30. And I think we're saying it's going to change that to 35. It's with, the target. with a range of 30 to 40. Yes. Right. Sorry. There's the guideline. Yeah, and the, I just want to make sure. That's right. Right. And so right. the same was true on the cash. The old guideline, I think, was 5%. And now we're seeing new guidelines is two percent. The range of zero to five. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Now, my other question, though, is with respect to the FDIC point. I mean, obviously, you could have multiple accounts. I get that we want an editor to handle it, and that we might have the opportunity for greater return. But you could have uh, relationships with multiple financial institutions and have an FDIC insured account here and here and here. We do. You could we do. Play. Okay. But our point is that we've we've been in excess of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so Perfect. we're at risk for any being in excess. Of but you you really wouldn't. That was, that's what I want to make sure I was understanding clearly. You could have two hundred fifty in one bank that's fully oh. insured, two fifty in another bank that's you could have you could have right. two fifty in fifty banks. Right, exactly. But but it's very difficult to manage. Uh, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's been the the problem is we've had in maybe six or seven banks. We've had most of it in six or seven banks right? because it's not managing to right. go any further. Okay. So we 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 do away with that risk at the end of the, at the end of the day. Of the management risk. Right. But we also we also had at least one account where we had a million dollars. Oh millions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we yeah, had that's... oh we had definitely an excess of a million. Oh yeah, that's that, now I don't I'm not worried that if we have over an excess of a million dollars at Wells Fargo. Okay. I mean, I, I think it'd be very difficult. For, I mean, if Wells Fargo went under, we you know, we'll all be in trouble, but anyway, but I, I assume not. But you know, some of the other we don't, they're not the whole Wells Fargo out there, or no old Bank of America out there. So that's the reason why. And there's no reason why if we can do it better to take that risk. And then the other question I had was with respect to then the um, so we 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 will be pushing more to equity than to cash. A little bit well, because of the increase, this increase. And and what's Manetta's take on? You know the current market, and well, you know. I know if they could predict, we should all have a right. Market. I mean, you talk to the investment manager and said, "This is the time to get in." I mean, obviously, that's what they tell you, right? Because right. it's low now, so it's going to go back to where it was. That's that's what they tell you. But then, you know, you that's this is where the investment manager comes in. I mean, he he's got to decide when to make those decisions. Uh, you know, at the timing, you know, that's then you. You rate them at the end. You look at them. What you know? What kind of results he gave you? We're happy with the results that we've gotten so far. Okay, uh, and, you know that they, they've met they've met our 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 guide, our, our target. And were they trying to be more aggressive? I mean, what was what was the discussion that you guys had? Would you have driven it higher than thirty five percent? Oh, there was there was yeah, there was a discussion that you know some believe that you know we should go higher. I'm not of the you know uh, in managing other people's money. You know, I want to be as cautious as possible. I, you know, I said, I, I want I, I, I think this is, you know, this is a good but, but, I, but I think, to Lisa's point, I think my recollection of the discussion, this wasn't a Manetta driven change. This no, 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 no. This came out of the finance yeah. committee. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, people in the finance committee felt that we should, we should be out there further. And we agreed that, that we, we agreed to go up to 40. That's what we yeah. need to. The 35 was the compromise. Yeah. The 35 was the guideline. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Alex, for the equities that uh, that do fall within the guidelines, is there an investment policy as to what you know what kinds of stocks are going to manage? Well, we don't man we don't uh, we don't invest directly in any one stock. No, no, it's all kind of funds. Okay. Yeah. It's all it's but all kind of funds. funds. And funds, right? And you know, diversified. And there's there's a range of you know. What percentage international, or, you know, 
those type of things. So. But that's a policy or anything, or that's when that that's a policy. No, that's that, that's in that's in the guidelines. It's in the guidelines. Where it's in the appendix. It's mm -hmm. in yeah. It's in the guidelines. Okay. By the way, for your for your information or for everybody's information, okay, our exposure in our equity uh, portfolio to Russia is seven hundred and eleven dollars. Okay. So. That's when you when you see that you understand that you have an investment manager who's been prudent, okay. In a way, I mean, it, you know, it, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't out there, you know, trying to, you know, get his returns. Maybe when things were good, and now that things are not so good, it would be. But our total exposure is seven hundred eleven dollars. So uh, that, that's the type of investment manager that we need to, we need to have. Okay. Any other comments, observations? So we have a motion on the floor, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so may I, have a, may I have a vote to approve the recommendation that Alex has made? Aye. 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 All right. But the last thing I want to mention on the investment is that uh, the investment management people have been on on the on the job. Uh, about four and a half years. And per our, our policy, uh, we require that we go out to bid contracts between three to five years. So the finance committee did vote to agree to go out to bid. And there is an RFP going out, I believe this week or this today. Out, right? Today. Today. It'll go out today. It will be going out today, an RFP. Uh, we've set up a, a, a working group, a committee of the finance committee uh, to uh, first we did the RFP, you know, the, the requirements. We're going out to the market. Uh, we'll be receiving bids by August 15th, if I remember correctly. And uh, we'll be reviewing the, 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 the bids uh, between August 15th and September 1st. September 1st, then we start the interview. By October 1st, we should be coming back to the board with a recommendation on uh, on what uh, Moneda will be uh, quoting, and you know we've also we've allowed them to uh, proceed, you know, to also quote. But we are going to the market to see what else is out there. Right. So I just wanted to make everybody aware that the RFP is going out. So let the minutes show that the motion carried unanimously. We have adopted the new policy. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and as is. Uh, our custom, we are reviewing each of the committee charters. Um, and today, uh, Beth Sampino is going to review the uh, Human Resources Committee charter for this fall. And that will be a vote of the final. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I'm just going to go over the things that we've changed on this charter since the last time we brought it to committee. Um, we have added a statement relating to the key commission. We've had discussion uh, amongst ourselves about using strategy or mission. Right now, I'm gonna just go with mission. And when the board lands on um, what we wanna do for consistency, uh, we can easily make a change on the mission. In terms of our membership, we changed from three property owners to four. We felt that there was enough going on that we needed one more property owner. Plus when we went out to do a replacement, there were so many um, highly qualified people with HR experience that we decided to, it would be prudent to add one more. We also added um, the conflict of interest policy to be signed by all committee members, which is something that the board voted on and agreed earlier this year. When you go into HR committee responsibilities, we um, added the word annual in the compensation ranges, uh, just to give um, Shannon a little bit of leeway that if at any time she or the director of HR wanted these reviewed, it could be on every single year if the market uh, so warranted. And the last sentence we um, just added again to provide a little bit of leeway to Shannon and Sarah that the HR committee is open to any kind of assistance that they should need. The HR committee really stands to serve the board, but to really help Shannon and our HR director, Sarah, with any kind of issues that come up during the year. It's a place where they can come and leverage the expertise on the board. Those are the major changes that we've made to the charter. Any questions or 
discussion. I guess are you going to have a motion or? Well, yeah, I would ask for a motion. Well, I would so, like make a motion. <laughs> so, Beth, do you want to make a motion? I'm sorry, sure. Um, I, I make the motion to vote on this and pass the resolution or pass the new charter. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah, I just have a comment. Uh, but I applaud the changes to the uh, to the charter. I think they're, you know, obviously they were needed and, you know, they're all very good. Mike, I, I forgot to mention this to you before. Was, uh, it, it states that new members will be solicited from the Kika membership, but it doesn't, in the other charters that I've seen, it mentions that it will be communicated out to the members. So we, we solicit applications from the memberships, right? That's what we intend to do, right? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 So just to clear up the, the language, the, the language in the other charter says it's communicated to our members, you know, to solicit applications. This one, it just says new members will be solicited from the Kika membership, but that means like what happened last time, you know, the, the chair appointed the members of the, you know, by, by hand, he, he himself appointed the members. That's not, that's soliciting from the, that's not, you know, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, it's just you sure. it's right. no, I mean, I said the previous chair. Oh, oh, the previous chair did that. That's when we had a kingdom in, in Kika, remember? Oh, please, no. No, please. Uh, so that uh so I was saying we, we want to be sure that we communicate out to our members and, and ask them for applications. That's that's one thing. But this is very good. Thank you. So 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 Alex, um it says new members will be solicited from the membership and approved by the board of directors. You want me to add that we're communicating the results of that out to membership because uh, that's is that your point? I say communicated. If you read the other charters, Some it says I, that it's, sure it's published or communicated so that all the members know that there's openings in the in the HR committee. So we'll basically advertise though that we're going we to will advertise. Yeah. So we you don't like the word. Board. So you don't like the word solicited because that's kind of what that that means. You want yeah, me to change yeah. the word solicited. So to me, that is exactly what it means. It is. If you solicit, members, will be, if you solicit membership, you are asking them to participate. Right. But that in the other what that means. If you look right. at the you can make I think it. if you look at the finance committee charter, what it says in there is something like through the normal Kika communication uh, channel, yeah, we they, will request people right. to do whatever they do. We'll have a process. Well, why don't we have standard language in all of the like charters? That. If you look at the others, it's different. Let's okay. standardize that language. So, so, so could I just make a suggestion that um, we leave this for now and we'll go back with the others and come up with standard wording and then I can go back and change that all at once? I think that's the right thing to do. I think we, to this yeah. earlier discussion point, we just need to sync these up. There's nothing bad in any of them. They're just not consistent. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's good. Is that all right? And, and then I had her, um, her, her motion, her motion. So. Okay, so let's. I, uh, one, can you I make one the more, motion again, Beth? Could I, I just wrong. wanted to make one more comment because Alex had asked me a question over the weekend about yeah. um, the terms of people, uh, and I do have that information for him. So this year, Richard Ames will roll off. Um, next year, Bert Hefke and myself will roll off, and the following year, our new members. Dave Lozer and Julie Fraunhofer will roll off. All right, so if you would send us that, so that's, we should post that that information, like, you know, we have on the other committees. Okay, well, you know, the terms, Shannon, the terms. You, Shannon yeah. you have that information, I think, from Sarah yeah. to get it posted. That's, what, that's a question on what's the year? Is it a calendar year or is it? Like yes, the it's March, the, um, the, term, the term end is January 15th of each year. Okay. Term start is the 15th and the end is the 15th. So I think, Beth, did I hear you say that your perspective at this point is we ought to just table this for the moment, clean up the language and all the charters, and then and then revisit the vote on this one when the language is cleaned up? Uh, I, I'd like to vote on this and get this in play so that we have it, and then we can certainly update it with all the others when we when we, when we move to some consistent language. That's what I'd like to do. It's the only one that we haven't voted on. And you, Beth, do you want to revise the motion to reflect? Yes, I, I would like to pass a motion to vote on this, um, the HR charter. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Um, now, uh, is there anything else for Beth about this? Okay. Um, now is the time when we get to say thank you uh, to Carl Ritchie, who, uh, after a uh, Unfortunately for a short time, um, he is going to be leaving. And I wanted to thank you so much, Carl, for, for jumping in uh, at a very challenging time, doing a great job getting us organized and, and overseeing uh, your purview. Um, and we understand your reasons for leaving, and I think they're noble and admirable. Uh, the job that you've done with disabled kids is so, so special and or it, it, it gives us confidence that uh, we are working with people who have far more uh, stake in the community than uh, than the normal average person and, and you've done a, you've done a wonderful job I don't think there's a person here who uh, we're glad for you and your family uh, if you want to say anything um, you know please do please do um, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I had the opportunity to speak to the security team before leaving. And it's amazing how quick you can make connections out here with the folks. And it's, uh, it's be tough leaving them. Um, I had the opportunity to speak to the uh, directors and the conversation. Um, obviously, our executive leadership and now the board. I want to thank you all for the opportunity as well. And I, I really respect what you're doing, obviously, because I too am a town council member. I think you all know that. And my pleasant. I have a lot of, uh, of um, things I have to do for them, and and I'm, I'll be able to do a little more now than I have been in back in my Special Olympics. That was just such an amazing um, opportunity then to go to the USC game. I think to see it on kind of a world stage, and I will be having opportunities to continue to be involved in that. And like you said, my family, um, after 37 years of doing this, um, my wife kind of decided you being on call 24 7 is enough. Jesus, it's, it's time for you. I think her current comment was, let me know when you have time for me. That was the uh the, that was kind of the moment, like you're right, this is where I need to be. You have a fantastic team here. Um if Mark's confirm or when Mark's confirm, I think you got a fantastic person here ready to step up. We've had the opportunities to work with some of our leadership and security. Um, kind of put a succession plan together, if you will. There's some really good leadership ready to step up. Um, we made some great strides, I think, at the time. Again, thank you all so much for the opportunity. And so I leave you already, but we may committed to making sure things are done. I told Mark and Tony both, as well as Shannon, I'm still available for a phone call. I think if you write that moment, you can call me, but I'll certainly get back to you. I'm always here to help. So thank you. Need you need no more 24 7? No, sir. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Wait, thank you're saying through July 22. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Anybody else wanted to say anything? Thank you, Carl. All right, thank, thank you, Carl. Uh, and now we're going to get the uh, second quarter traffic report from our interim uh, Mark Powell. Oh, Mark, welcome. Thank you. Delighted to have you present to us and, and uh, look forward to working with you. Likewise. I'd also like to thank the comments from the board. Um, personally, thank Carl for all his time for me professionally and personally. You know, it's been a lot of time. So, well, thank you for allowing me to present. Um, you know. Under there, yeah, just going to pull it down. Do it in the bottom right. Yes, we do it in the bottom right. right down yeah, by the bottom right. Nope. Right. In the program, up, up one. one. Well, Mark, as you can <laughs> see, we're together. you're jumping right into a crack team. There you go. Well, as you may recall, February 15th of this year, we started a traffic calming initiative on some of the roadways in um, Kika, and we have been working hard since that. We're going to compare some of the data from first quarter to second quarter. Please keep in mind, for the first quarter, the only month we were able to capture was the full month of March. So when you're looking at the comparisons, we're looking at the first quarter being March, the second quarter being the last three months. So on the parkway, the first quarter, we had 98% compliant or low risk. And you may recall, um, compliant is 30 or below, low risk is 31 to 39 miles an hour. 
medium is 40 to 49, and high is 50 or greater. So we did a pretty good job on the parkway, keeping the compliance to low risk. Still have a few areas of concern in the medium risk, but it's generally gone down for second quarter. And we've been using the high visibility digital signs on the parkway. In that first month, we had the flags, a robust communications plan from our communications department that really um, got the information out to members, resort, contractors. So we're pretty happy with what we're seeing here on the park. And we're not getting rid of the digital thing. No. I do think they make a difference. They actually do. We'll see that in some of the data. Okay. Present. I'm moving on to governors. Again, 99 that first month of March, down a little bit, but not much. And we got to remember that the volume is considerably up for the second quarter because we're in peak season. We have more short-term renters that aren't hearing the communication plan. And we have just a lot more visitors to the island. So we're pretty happy with governors. A little bit of work in the medium risk, but we'll get there. Moving on to flyway. Flyway, see, we still have some issues. The speed limit is 20. So we still have people going well over in the medium risk. It's gone up to 32 from the 18. Again, comparing one month to three. Um, we have some recommendations for flyway, which will be on the next slide. But we are aware that flyway is still an issue and ongoing for working progress. So high risk about the same, but the medium risk has gone up. Has gone up. So let's talk about law enforcement. Unfortunately, um, can you get one more slide on? Unfortunately, we're still waiting for second quarter delivery for the um, data from CCSO. Um, as soon as we get that, we can share it. But first quarter, that was how many citations. But you don't have, you have a gut sense? I mean, just based on chat? Um, I would say it's probably lower. We are definitely working with some plans, which we'll see in the next slide, on how we can be a little more robust working with the sheriff's office. So we'll go on to the suggestions for Flyway. So with, it, with us being aware that we have work to do on Flyway to get those speeds down, we have some suggestions implementation of our new speed trailer. We had some hiccups with it. We had some supply chain order um, delays with the camera and the wiring. Those are in, they're installed and it's working. We had some networking challenges when our IT issues, but that's all taken care of. So we can now collect the data through that trailer. And our staff training, that's gonna be within the next two weeks, our staff will be trained on that trailer. That trailer will allow us to deploy it to targeted areas from the data that are showing the highest speed areas we'll be able to capture the license plate and the speed and the time of it. So we can track that back if it's a resort vehicle, we can go speak to the resort directly with proof. We can give that data to the sheriff's office so we can ask them to do more data-driven data -driven speed point checks. We can also talk to members. If it's a member that's speeding, we will know we'll be able to have a nice conversation saying, please slow down. Um, Suggestion to purchase and deploy additional digital speed signs. As you said, you think they work. We know that we have the data to show that the visual is slowing people down. Low profile one is catching the data, but it's not a visual reminder to slow down. So we would suggest adding additional um, digital speed signs. And can I ask you another question? Absolutely. I'm asking you to maybe not to speculate, but is your, is your gut sense that the biggest category of offender is resort or homeowners or visitors? Do you have, you guys have a sense? I would say it's a combination of all. Okay. But we can dive into that. that. Um, we would also recommend a permanent location on a flyway for one of the digital speed signs. When you say additional, what are you, how many, what are you talking about? So we probably initially asked for four more. They're at a cost of 3,000 a piece. So we would be asking the um, security task force to bring that to the board as a recommendation. So four for $3,000, $12,000. Yes, sir. And then at the bottom security task force discussion of the potential utilization of off-duty CCSO. Where, but Shannon, where are we with that? I mean, you know, we're not going to have a meeting until September. So what do we you know, want to... Well, if the security task force is in agreement, we have to do the electronic report. But we don't want to... And we're going to have a meeting short. We'll be bringing that as a recommendation. Um, also, utilizing off duty sheriff office deputies for data driven speed enforcement, but that would be at APA's expense. 
Currently, we can hire officers to strictly come out and do speed enforcement. Their base rate is 40 an hour, $2.80 additional per workman's comp, and a $4 admin fee. So it comes out to $46.80, and you have to hire them for a four hour minimum. So we would be recommending, again, we would utilize that service so we can say during this time, this day, this hour, so, um, we need you to be in this area. Right. Can we vary it though? I mean, if we, because, you know, once it gets out there that they're spending, Absolutely. so we can decide it's going to be a Tuesday afternoon yes. or Friday night or whatever. Yes, and we would use our data to initially say Place where we think they need to be high visibility, but then they would use their description for us. This is on their off time, basically. Correct. Right. Correct. So, our some major emergency, they would strictly be doing traffic. And the deputies that the town would, would be running the normal calls for service. So we say, look, we want one for four hour period on flyway. Right? That basically what we, because that's our that's where our risk is right now. Right. right. So, so but, but, and one of the things we've been looking at is this intersection fulfillment, the uh, flyway uh, buffalo head Glen avenues. Do we know what the speed is there? So we can um our well, yeah, I don't mind speaking on that. You can certainly drill in. All traffic solutions is a great system to cleanse data. It's used nationwide by law enforcement municipality. I've used it before. Where if, if the device is put has placed close to that intersection, you can pull that data and see what the speed is. You can also drill down into the data and find your high speeds with what would be fastest speed for that collection of set of data, your lowest speeds. But let's just let's set charts too that'll tell us time of day. If you think 11 o'clock to 12 is a peak time, and we're, you know, we're seeing obviously in the morning time when folks are coming home, getting up from school, coming to work, lunchtime and afternoons, it kind of tells us exactly when the highest number of those who are going medium risk pirates are actually um, violent, doing the violations. We can pinpoint that. But the answer to your question, we can get that kind of data, but it's going to go to some of the as you feel necessary. Um, I, I have gone out there with Phil and I spent quite a bit of time out there. And he has a point as far as I'm concerned. That intersection is dangerous. Come toward uh, governors, you come up that rise and if you're speeding, I don't care how with you are, you pull out. So my question becomes, Despite the argument that if we put a stop sign up, we have to do whatever. Why not put a stop sign there? See, as a pilot program, if it helps. I, I can't see that the argument that says everyone will ask for one really holds any water. Anymore. I just think we have to. We are in a situation now where we're challenged in so many areas about traffic control and all that. But to try it at a known problem intersection. I don't think we're hurt any. I really don't. I just can't see the downside of it. And it would it would provide a lot of pedestrians. I almost saw you know, uh, you know a family going across there and the little kid is looking around and and you know the mother loses track of him, turns around, says, Come on, Bobby. You know, well, in that time, something really bad could have happened. So, and there's so many people going to be so. I, I I am there, going to say there is a stop sign on both okay, right and on the navy, right? There, there, there's a stop sign on both sides. It's not a plot. There's, there's not, not a plot. 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 There should be yeah. a plot. but that would be turned it into a four-way four stop, stop. Yeah, which is what I understand from talking to some of the experts that that's not recommended, the four-way. No, it's it's but I I I gotta tell you, in that particular application, and that because of the way you know, a four-way stop when you've got lines of sight and all that, different challenges. In that particular location, from my bearing, it would not hurt to have that there. And if it doesn't work or if it's something wrong, pull it up and and, and do that. So anyway, um, I mean, I think do you we're want to just, to we're to discuss pass. that in the security pass. I, 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 I think that I think that makes sense. I mean, it's frankly, much cheaper than any of these things that we're talking about. I mean, because we know it will obviously slow people down at that intersection. Yeah. Um, I mean, just the, 
one of the critical intersections that we have. We don't have, there's no crosswalk here. I mean, there's, there's no there's crosswalk. No, no cross, at least a crosswalk, you would say, what, what is a crosswalk? That doesn't hurt anybody. I mean, that's just a pain. I mean, that at least it makes people a little bit aware, you know, that there's a crosswalk, you know, I should slow down. I wouldn't right, well, anyway, but to do nothing, we've done nothing. We're, we're gonna, nice. we're gonna, we're, we are gonna bring that up in our meeting and we'll be moving toward doing so. Mr. Chair, I, can I, I have a, I have a couple comments before. Um, first of all, I applaud everybody for the work they've done. I think if we're going to purchase additional digital um, signs and hire more off duty, we should be able to do e votes on that in the month of August so that we don't waste any more time um, getting some of these in. I also think these things aren't going to do anything for the corner of Buffalo Head and Glen Abbey. As you know, I live there. I've spoken to you guys a, a many times about it. Um, it is an extremely dangerous corner. My husband and I have stopped traffic for families to cross and it's just an accident waiting to happen. I think we should be putting in stop signs because I don't care how many times um, Shannon's people trim and, and make that line of sight better coming over the bridge. When you're coming off Bufflehead and you look left, you cannot see the cars coming and you're halfway across that street before you see a car. And there are families with children on bikes, they walk their bikes, they're pulling things to get to the beach. Um, I, I think we need to move forward, forward with something. And if the stop signs prove to be um, too much for us, we can take them out and try something else. But I don't think we should be waiting any longer. We've been talking about this for a year. I went along with getting um, data, looking at everything, understanding it. And I think we're doing a great job on that. But this corner in particular needs more. I don't think we should do any more studies. I think we should do something that stops the problem. That that's my two well, cents. Well, we we agree. So we'll we'll discuss that uh, with the committee and let's move on. Um, and we, we but the yes, if I am Mr. Chair, as the board, you know, I think like Mark and I was we're talking we're looking at state. It's obvious to us too, they're challenging the climate, no question about it. Especially when you look at our two main thoroughfares, the parkway governors that have been consistent. We it worked. We have a roadway. Either roads into it with cars are going faster, take a speed, and going to come into a 20 mile an hour. Obviously, the intersection you're talking about, there's a time we need enforcement. There's no question about that. And the deputies out here do a great job. They really do. We have two deputies on the island. Are by the town, but they have to not only answer or uh, respond to our request, and they do a great job. We ask them to run some weight off, but they can't stay there. They have they get pulled and said to go handle any call for service on the island. So if if we get the approval from, from our security committee and hire those off duty officer, we can commit them for the several hours or wherever the area you're talking about, get some really robust intent to enforce that. So I get some people's attention, some tickets. Um, the, the numbers we have in that one quarter weren't as high as I'd like to see them, obviously, because we know the data, we have cars going well over the 20 miles an hour or even past meet the uh, low risk. So having that, that opportunity, and I didn't reach out for the county, so I found out that they have the off-duty available. And we, we hire them and they work for Kika versus working for the town. Keep in mind that there's still a possible stretch, and we can't go out there and tell them, well, fly away if you're one mile over, we demand you write that. They're still gonna have a bit of stretch, in. but those blue lights and writing those tickets, I think, can make a big impact. To your point with stop sign, you know, sir, at this point, you've done so much work, you've done so much study, collecting the data. It, it may be an opportunity for the security task force to come back to the board and tell us, let's try it. And I'm not speaking for obviously the Shannon or Tony, you know, but if you don't try it, you won't know. You know, and, and we may get out here and find out. Stop signs not the answer. We may have to start looking at opportunities. But we do recognize as your security team working with our county partners that there are some challenges on flyaway, but there are some opportunities, including the limited conference. And then the one one thing, and this is still I know right. 
the point has been is that the analysis that we did was for a car full of him, not somebody traveling, you know, walking across the intersection, which takes more time. So even at 20 or 25 miles per hour, we may not even be in compliance. Um, and so that, you know, so I think even saying if we're going to get it down to 20 or 25 miles per hour, that may not even be the answer. That's why I'm concerned. I think we need to do the stops. No, I, I think we do too. And we, and we, we will uh, have that conversation. Uh, I'll hope for the outcome I would like to see. So that's what you knew. And, and Phil, uh, we hear you. And I, and I know the security team, the leadership team here, as well as the board, they're listening. So thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Briefly, Shannon mentioned Fourth of July weekend. Um, Luckily, we had a little bit of rain at some of the visitors away, I think, but Saturday was our busiest day with 8,047 vehicles going through the main gate and 4,685 the gate. In addition to the access issues that our staff dealt with with that volume, uh, we also had calls for youngsters, for alligators, for teenagers swimming in a lagoon, numerous calls into the lagoon with alligators. We had to deploy it from any of our staff. They want to ride the alligator. <laughs> that was every security on deck. Yeah, we partnered with the resort security. We partnered with CCFO. We checked as many lagoons as quick as we could. Well, we never found. Got to make sure those signs are up for our libraries. They are. We had call people on maybe jump start. We get the hundreds of calls asking what time the fireworks start. Asking what the traffic is <laughs> on focus. So our our staff is working hard for you. They're um, busy as they can be, and um, we appreciate your support. Matt, let me, can I, may I? Mark, yes. Uh, Mark, I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. Mark, uh, I have no doubt, you know, what you just said about, you know, our security people, team, whatever. Yes, sir. Uh, I do want to emphasize on sometimes in, incorrect information gets out from some of your your new people. I imagine they're the new people. So we've got to do a little better job of training them, not to say things like, uh, Nigeria Park is a public park, so anybody has access to it. That was Mark's okay. issue to deal with. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we've got to be, you know, that that issue has got to be because, as you know, you know, it just gets out in the community and then yes. people just go, you know, uh, we've got to do a little better job of in that training process for our new people. To be sure they understand it and say, if you don't know, do not talk, do not say, ask somebody, ask the, the, the supervisor or whatever, before you speak out and, and get people, a lot of people very mad Absolutely. and upset about it. And that so topic we're doing that, we're not doing it. You know. What are you doing to address that? So that topic was dealt with immediately and that employees council on but, that. However, but you see how many emails got generated from it. I mean, I do. You know, I know. It's all, I mean, we do. <laughs> I mean, I immediately sent it. No, I sent it to Shannon. Media, Everybody immediately sent it to Shannon. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Carl has laid a great framework for the key this departure. We actually brought someone on board today to strictly manage staff at the gate, day in and day out, night shift and day shift. And he will be in charge of all the training. We are going to change some of the training as you're asking us to, to be a little more robust in the questions that they get. Probably start doing some role play before we let them start answering the phones. So we are addressing the issue. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's a good plan. Thank you, Mark. So they thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Mark. Thank you very much and welcome, Mark. Look thank forward, you. look forward to working with you, Carl, again. Thank you so much. You uh, need to go. Been, uh, it's it's <laughs> been a very pleasant experience working with you. We all will miss you. Okay. Um Brad was uh McElvain has been working hard on something we really need to do, which is to uh, get our governance in order. Uh, his committee have uh, been doing a lot of work. So where are we, Brad? All right. Thanks, Gary. Uh, we've met several times. One of the things that we did was to try to do organizationally what we to be uh, focusing on. We basically divided up the topics in five areas. One or Clerical definitional issues, which is our titles. We also looked at the statute, which is primarily the North Carolina Nonprofit Corporation Act. Uh, South, South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. Uh, state. Uh, South Carolina. Uh, the, uh, and then uh, with, to make sure that we actually comply with the statute. We didn't want to have something that wasn't compliant with the statute. 
Third is board and member processes, which this mostly focuses on our bylaws and making sure that our bylaws are up to speed. Um, fourth is an issue that is getting progressively probably more difficult. Um, is something that's been raised, which is the ARB and design controls. Um, the fifth is board members who should be on the board, voting rights, that type of thing. So far, we've gone through we're, the clerical uh, definition is ongoing every time we try to find, find something and make a note of it and correct it. Statutory, we went through an initial cut of reviewing. Uh, Bill created a chart which helped us compare the statute to the bylaws and covenants. The good news is that we uh, are pretty much all in compliance. I mean, we really didn't find any serious problems. There was one issue that talks about the definition of members, which is actually helpful for us because it says a member is someone who can vote. Um, we had sort of that issue about who was a member. Uh, the statute actually makes it complicated, clarifies that for us. And so we're just going to make sure there's also some issues that we talked about, for example, on uh, removal of board members. Uh, the, the, it talks about in our bylaws that it's just a vote, it doesn't talk about the percentage. Uh, the statute actually has uh, talks about maybe different percentages because we have cumulative vote that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, the second, third one is board member processes, which is really where we are now, where we're trying to look at the, at the bylaws, figure out are there anything missing, are there things in there that are wrong, are there things that need to be changed. Um, so there are a lot of things in there um, that are just not there. Um, that's one of the things that we're looking at right now. We're looking at some of the some standards out there. Uh, I know I was looking at, for example, Robert's Rules, see people that we don't necessarily use, and Robert's Rules does a, have a sample bylaws, uh, which is helpful once it's for flagging issues. Uh, it also has sample um, definitions for uh, officers, what they should be doing, um, what their job is, and I think it's going to be helpful as well. Um, we also began having a discussion the last meeting on A or B, which was which was actually really helpful uh, because what we really learned was that there had been a fair amount of discussion between A R B staff and Kika staff in the past to begin the transfer of at least of the non-new so uh, basically remodeling innovation work um, to Kika. Um, it got stalled or stopped for whatever reason. There's a basics basis out there. Uh, that we can use to sort of start that. Um, I thought that was very helpful to just for us to understand it. Chat and, and send back and forth emails, which we circulate work so that everybody can understand that there is this base out there. Um, so that's where we are right now. Again, we're trying to get this done by the end of the year. Um, last thing I have to say, which is, has nothing to do with government, well, it does have some stuff to do with governments, but it deals with the secretary. Because the one thing that is in the statute is the only um, uh, board officer role that's defined with a, a specific task is the secretary. And the secretary is responsible, obviously, for making sure that we have all of our corporate records in your list. And I'm happy to say that we are done the process of scanning all of our historic corporate records from optical character recognition so we can actually search them because it, the fear was, as you may or may not know, they were all up in but they're all up in binders in the second floor of this building. And if something happens to this building, we have no record of what we did in the past. So now we will have an uh, electronic version stored off site so that we will be able to do that. I think we're going to be done with that in a month, basically. Bear, they did the first 10. Um, it's taken them about two weeks to do the first 10 binders. So oh, we'll just eight, plan. Well, there's got to be 100 binders. About 85. Oh, 85. She counted all. <laughs> Guess who's managing the project for Brad? <laughs> Alan's doing a great job. Uh, and we got a very competitive price, which is good. Um, the good news is this work is not that expensive, uh, but it's very necessary. They needed to do that rent out the flyer. Is there a freelance person you could bring in to just do the mechanical parts of it? Well, what, what, what we did is, and what I recommended to Ellen and she did is I said, go to our lawyers, because our lawyers basically have to do this all the time. Yeah. So they know who the good contractors are. And, uh, talk to them. and we got a price that seems really very reasonable for what we're doing. I think it's five or $6,000. 
Uh, so I mean, to get it all electronic and so forth. And so if we need to go back, we need to figure out, did we ever discuss X or Y 20 years, no, 15 years ago? We can actually search the writers to try to find that out as opposed to somebody having to go through, you know, page by page. What's, what's the antiquarian system? Um, generally, it depends on what I know exactly what it is, but it's uh, it's going to be a scannable PDF <clears throat> OCR text recognition, yes. so you can search for text string oh, okay. of whatever you're looking for. So that's going to be a big component of this is certain project. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to let that, on that. Uh, happy that that's being done, and uh, uh, and, a, and a problem with which we had will be solved. So, secretary is the only. What did you say again? It's the only officer where there's a defined task for what the officer. Like, it's still not compensation. It's still not compensation, oh. and it's still not two hours a week, <laughs> which we say in nine nine. <laughs> All right, Brad, thank you. Wait, thank you. Oh, uh, and you come. So if you want to change that, that's a much harder task. Yeah, and this, the, the statute allows cumulative voting, does not require cumulative voting. It's in our it's in our conference. And do you guys have a perspective as well as a good thing? Uh, it's in both sides. I think it's in both sides. I, we haven't discussed it, I don't think. I think, you know, on the covenants, I think we're going to try to make it as few covenant changes as possible, given that it's a more difficult task. So I think unless there is a strong push to believe that it has to be changed, the covenants will be left as it. Okay. Just so everybody knows what cumulative voting is, means that you can vote all your votes for one candidate, two candidates, or, you know, you can vote yeah, you know, if there are four candidates running, you can vote for four, you can vote for three, two, or four. Okay. All righty. Um, so I think that uh, ends our uh, reviews, and, and we will now move uh, to the plus. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, to the uh, member comments uh, and any Kika topics. Um, Laura? Thank you. Uh, I have three separate items. One, Shannon. Yeah. Is Kika recovered from the hack now, now that you've bought the equipment? I mean, are we back up completely? Um, we are. The company is um, operating, and uh, we still have things that we need to get done, but we are operating. Well, you know how long it's going to take to get the things done to get us back? I can't give you an estimate off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Um, second, I'm all in favor of stop sign. I've been all in favor of a stop sign. So um, I think that needs to be done. It needed to be done months ago. Third, um, I think it's helpful to have the Human Resources Committee come and do the charter and Brad do the governance task force report. But I do think it would be helpful if we got quarterly reports from all the committees task force. Amenities and security, CN Council, HR, give an update of what they're doing, not just a charter review. Um, and then there was a development committee that was discussed, and I don't even know if that's something running next. So I just could plug in for more quarterly reports from different task forces. Okay, that's more. I think it's we are refined our you know committees and do that it'll be more nimble being able to like you know to do reporting it shouldn't be hard to do a quick quarterly summation of, of those things and uh, so i think that's good okay uh anybody else in the room or who do we have from um, next okay online our first question is paul hennessy paul you should be unmuted Okay, thank you. This was uh, the other point that I wanted to raise, but let me just say that I think the point that Maura just made is an excellent one. These committees that are formed by the board have important functions, and it seems to me in the spirit of, of disclosure and communications and getting feedback, a regular publication of agendas and minutes and updates from 
the committee chairs um, is uh, an important part of our governance. Not doing it implies that the, that the role of those committees isn't that important, which of course is not the case. Okay, so what I would like to, to talk about just I think relatively briefly is the board's communication to the, communi to the community on June 27th. And this communication had the headline, an update from your board, board of directors regarding island development. So, um, and Jerry, I think you alluded to this general topic in your opening comments, uh, but I wanted to, to make a couple of observations. First, you've highlighted um, in, in that release, you highlighted um, the, sort of the strategic purpose of Kiowa. And I would quote from that section that says, this includes taking the leadership role in ensuring that Kiowa Island's unique look and feel is preserved by exceptional stewardship. So those are actually quite powerful words and I think need to be uh, highlighted. Second observation, in this text, um, in the second paragraph, it says, and I quote, the initial question the board faces is what rights does Kika have under the governing documents and relevant law, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, fine. I would just ask the board to consider the antecedent reference, which talks about leadership. I would not, I would not focus, I would, my personal view, which I'm sharing with you, is that I would not focus on what legal rights the board has. Rather, I would urge you to consider representation of the core membership, i.e. the homeowners and what the homeowners interests are. Aside from whether you have a legal right or a legal ob uh, obligation, I think you have a responsibility to the membership to act in a leadership role. Okay, next point. In the, in the text on the last page, you say, so what are we doing now? We have instructed our council, again, I don't think that's the right place to start, but fair enough. We have instructed our council to begin a discussion with council for Kiowa Partners and the town of the recent development issues surrounding the Cape and Beachwalker parcels. Well, I think you left out a couple of pretty important items. One would be Captain Sam Spit, and the other is Andel West. Now, maybe those weren't topical at the time at, on June 27th, question mark. But I guess the broad purpose of my comment is that the board can, it, there's enough talent on the board and on other volunteers from the community. For example, Preserve Kiowa. There's enough talent that the board can frame a point of view and can express that point of view. And maybe it ha doesn't have legal jurisdiction that if the board had a view that we, we members do not want to see Captain Sam Spit developed, just as an example, wouldn't it be a courageous and leadership thing for the board to issue a statement to that effect. So I love this communication. Thank you for, for doing it. Um, um, I, I hope that this is not a function of this effort, is not a function of the governance committee because this isn't really about governance per se. It's about representation of the members' interests as it relates to ongoing development issues. I don't think it's a legal jurisdiction issue. It's about, govern it's about leadership in representing the majority view of our majority membership. So thank you for listening. 
that's what I'd like to say. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Um, do you want me to comment on that? Uh, first of all, I, I, I appreciate your remarks. Um, and uh, I think in putting out that statement, we were advising our community that we had to determine what our standing was um, because heretofore it has not been clear what that standing is, if it even existed at all. And did we have a seat at the table? And if we did have a seat at the table, what were the limits uh, on that or what were the uh, allowances on it? And that needed to be determined. Those discussions needed to happen. Uh, from my point of view, um, the legal uh, aspects of this board aren't what drives us, they're what support us in our mission. And I think, I think your, your remarks are, are very cogent. Uh, and I think we do need to, going forward, have a stronger voice. One of the difficulties that we have is understanding exactly what all our community wants. We need to develop some methodology in which we can communicate with our members and get a better feel that, in fact, is it 100 uh, passionate people or is it 2,000 passionate people? And we do not have the mechanisms as yet to determine what all our members feel and how they want to behave. That doesn't mean you're not right. It doesn't mean we shouldn't, going forward, uh, take perhaps stronger positions. It's very important that we not become an adversarial group. We can be passionate, we can be advocates, but it will do us no good to be at war with the partners and with the, uh, with the resort. We need to have open, clear dialogues for exchanges and understanding what our motives are. It doesn't mean we have to be spineless. It doesn't mean that we can't take a position on an issue, but it does mean that the relationships that we have with our staff, uh, with Amanda on the board, uh, with, with the town, uh, with Roger Warren, are key to making some very important things happen. Uh, but we do hear you uh, and we do not dismiss you. So thank you for those comments, uh, Paul, I, I appreciate them. And Jerry, just so that in case Paul didn't hear it earlier, you all sent David DiStefano to Charleston County's meeting on Endell West. So the board had representation related to Andal West. And, and just, just so, uh, so you know, um, the, uh, that, that message that was put out was crafted um, by Brad McElvain with a couple of uh, revisions by myself. And um, so we, we are listening not only to perhaps what I have to say, but to all our board members have to say. It's so important that you understand that in the past, this board was dysfunctional. And it is functioning now. And we are, we do have respect for each other. And we have a lot of very smart people who want to do the right thing. And as I've said in my opening remarks, this is a challenging time. It's not easy. You don't just flip a switch and make things happen. Um, you have to work collaboratively and you have to have a goal. Um, and so uh, again, I don't dismiss your remarks. I don't think anybody on this board does. So thank you. All right, Jerry, our next question is Phil Mancusi-Angaro. Phil, you should be unmuted. Okay, um, you hear me? Yes. Um, well, first I'd like to say thank you to Jerry, Beth, Alex, and Brad um, for, for taking this issue up so, so front and center because, you know, I've been passionate about it, but it's actually been going on for about two or three years now. And to finally have it discussed at the board what I find interesting is that the four executive officers are the ones that are speaking up in favor of looking closely at this. That, that means a lot. Um, I do have a couple questions though. I heard a statement made that the experts have said that a stop sign is not going to fix the problem. I'm not sure what they meant and I don't look for an answer right now, but I don't think that's quite correct. I would like to know as I mentioned earlier, what the top speeds we're actually seeing out there are. They don't, the report, the way it's prepared does not really allow you to understand those. In the past, we've had people 
clocked it over 50 miles an hour on the flyway at that stretch, um, which is scary as, as all get out. Um, but I think it would be helpful for those looking at this and thinking about it. What are those numbers? What are the top speeds? I also have always been concerned since this report and the last report that you include the low, low probability, whatever you call it, as with the compliance. Um, low means you're exceeding the speed limit by up to 10 miles an hour. That is not compliance to me. I think compliance should be set, treated separately. And I'd love to see what the numbers look like when you take this low chance and add it back into the other ones and see where we stand. Um, and just so you know, I do follow the traffic information that we get from Charleston County um, Sheriff's Department. Um, June, they're a little lagging on it, but in Mar March, there were 42 citations issued. That was interesting. Not sure where, because I couldn't find that information out. But in April, there were only eight, and in May, there was only one. So it seems like the number of citations being issued is dropping off. That's not helpful either. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I think it's something that, that we need to, to look into. Once again, I appreciate it. And I appreciate Jerry, you coming out and standing there with me. Thankfully, it wasn't in this 110 degree heat index days, but it is telling when you get out there. And as you saw, it was very telling driving across the bridge and trying to wait till you see where you can actually see someone standing there to cross. Every day I'm out there and every day I'm seeing people having to dodge cars. And as Beth pointed out, it's dangerous. It's an accident waiting to happen. But thank you all for taking the time to, uh, to look into this more closely. Thank you. Thank you, Phil, very much. Appreciate it. We have no other raised hands, Jerry. No other raised hands. Anybody else have anything that they would like to discuss? Um, and if not, I will uh, call for an adjournment of the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second, you make a motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.